The goal of this podcast is to help you break in and thrive in advertising. And welcome to Adjunct, where we interview the top advertising lecturers and professors across the country to lend some knowledge to your ear without spending thousands of dollars on a university credit as well. And this week, we learned from Chris Sparks, Instructional Associate Professor for Integrated Marketing Communications at the University of Mississippi, also known as Ole Miss. Chris is a strategic, creative, consumer-centric thought leader. She has brand, channel, sales, and marketing expertise in consulting, agency, and corporate environments, leading consumer food and beverage corporations, including Ogilvy & Mather, the Coca-Cola Company, and M&M and Mars. After 25 plus years in the corporate sector, she entered the classroom where she teaches in the Integrated Marketing Communications Program in the School of Journalism and in New Media at the University of Mississippi. Chris knows what it takes to break into marketing and advertising. She does her best to prepare her students to enter the world and thrive in it long term. We discuss the importance of advertising strategy, theory, and application, and she also understands the client side. Having worked for the Coca-Cola company for many years, she will teach you how to impress your future clients. And I have spoken to hundreds of professionals, and the consensus is that you need a few fantastic campaigns to stick out if you want to break into advertising. If you want to break into this business as an art director, copywriter, strategist, or maybe even an account, it is worth checking out our brand new Breaking and Enterings brand new Crowbar Awards. We are releasing a new creative brief every quarter for you to work on with a friend. Whether or not you enter is up to you, but we do have Greg Hahn judging this first show. He's the co-founder of Mischief, one of the top agencies in the business now, and it's an award and tool. The best campaign will earn an actual blue crowbar, and we do not advise you break into an agency with it, but if you do take pictures, recruiters and pros will be watching. So see the description for details. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Now on with the show. This is the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast Adjunct Edition. And as usual, I'm your accomplice, Gino Schellenberger. Kick it, Mikey. All right, Chris Sparks, welcome to the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast Adjunct segment of this how are you doing today thanks for coming on doing great thank you so much gina for having me on of course we're here to talk about you advertising your background and advice because you've taught a lot of advertising students in your career because you are an instructional associate professor at university of mississippi and then in the integrated marketing communications is that the school No, the school is the School of Journalism and New Media, but our largest program and one of the largest on campus is Integrated Marketing Communications. It's been around for about 11 years now, and it incorporates all the different aspects of an agency. Um, So we have advertising courses, we have uh, social media courses, digital media courses, we have public relations, and all that is encapsulated under Integrated Marketing Communications. Gotcha. So... Tell me, what can you major in then? Like, are you majoring in IMC or how does that work? Yeah, I love the major actually. It's integrated marketing communications and then uh, with a minor in general business. So that's a required uh, minor to be able to have. And then you can pick a specialization and the specialization is among eight different areas. It could go anywhere from sports marketing to social media marketing to public relations, um, any of those kind of uh, specialty areas. Ah, I love that. So very interesting, a little bit more unique as I'm, I'm, I'm rolling out these interviews with, with different professors across the country, professor lectures. So this is like first IMC-esque integrated uh, structured department. So really cool. So Great. we can dive into that. Um, but my first question for you is why are you teaching IMC? Why are you teaching advertising? Well, uh, I, 
moved over into education um, just as kind of an opportunity arose. Um, I left Ogilvy and Mather, uh, where I had been for three and a half years. I was looking for what I could do in uh, Mississippi. Um, I had a background in consumer marketing, mm -hmm. and um, I spoke with somebody about integrated marketing communications. They asked if I'd like to be an adjunct. Uh, so I did that. Um, did you and reach out? Lovely. You were reaching out about teaching that you wanted to find out about that or did they reach out to you no they reached out to me they found out about me and yeah. um really kind of knew the connection they were building the program the program had only been in existence for about a year at the time and they asked me if i would come talk to them and then they told me they had a marketing strategy class open and uh would i teach that and i did ah okay so they so you were there at the beginning how long is how long ago was that well that was 10 years ago believe it or not um, amazing I know, crazy. It's How probably changed a lot too. Fast. It has, it really has. Um, and then one of the kind of cool things was I really, you know, at the end of a spring semester of teaching, I was like, you know, I love this. I think it's really great. And so I was still doing some consulting roles and doing some stuff on the side. And I was like, I just want to do this full time. So I um, initiated a, a meeting with the dean at that time and asked him about um, coming on full time. Was there anything I could do to become a full time instructor? And he said, we could bring you on as a professional in residence. So I started nice. that fall as a professional in residence and I've moved through three different positions while I've been here. Uh, but I have found the track that I love now. Gotcha. What does professional in residence mean? Like what's yeah. different from your current title? So professional in residence is someone coming from industry. It would be a one year um, temporary mm. kind of position. Um, so it's someone that does not have their doctorate and uh, they want you to come into the classroom and bring some of that expertise from industry and integrate that in. Um, okay. So uh, did that for a year. And then they had an assistant professor uh, position open that was tenure track. Uh, so I applied for that and got that. How was and that process? Because I've oh, heard that's really tough to get, yeah, to get it tenured. Is. It really is. Um, and being in integrated marketing communications, um, I, I think the path um, to be able to publish and also being in the School of Journalism was a little bit of a uh, too broad of a net for me. Um, so um, I was teaching a good bit and uh, trying to be better at being a teacher. Coming from industry, I think we all want to be really great at teaching. Um, yep. Our industry is so dynamic that I always am looking for like what the greatest thing is and the newest thing to be able and integrate into the classroom. Nice. And so really, I ran out of time to be able to do a lot of research. And so I, I decided that I would just go to them. After three years, I went to them and said, you know what? This isn't working out. I don't want to be tenure track. That's not my goal. I've never sought tenure. What I love is the students. What I love is like helping them find careers, finding what they love, being able to um, launch their careers. And so um, I would like to apply for a different position and get off tenure track. And so uh, they were creating an instructional um, path at the same time. Nice. And so I interviewed for that. Um, I was an instructional assistant professor, and then I was promoted a year ago to associate professor. Okay. So let's clarify. So people understand, I think students out there, people maybe not even in academia just yet, or just got out of it. I think tenure track to define that is that PhD, usually terminal degree, or you're doing research, right? You're, right. you're getting published in these journals. Mm -hmm. The AAA, the, I believe, is what the, um, um, the Advertising Academy uh, is like, kind of like what's known for publishing. I forgot what it's fully stands for. The, that wasn't for you, you were saying. Like, and it, really I, it wouldn't wasn't. be for me either. That's it, it just really wasn't. I had to find out that that's not where my heart was. And it's supposed to be 30% um, research, 30% teaching, 30% um, um, service. Um, so What's service. Yeah. So service is service to the university in terms of being on committees, um, organizations that you serve on as advisor, okay. uh, those kind of things. So, so just in the layers. Yeah. Just, just like so okay. when you take all of that away and you say, okay, A third of your time like, teaching. over two thirds of this is not going to be about teaching. Yeah. Um, that's not what brought me there because I had a full career in industry, I, I wouldn't ask for more. I mean, I love what I did. 
Um, so coming over to higher ed was kind of a new thing for me, mm -hmm. but I feel like my career was really before I came to higher ed. I I'm in higher ed because I want to right. help and to help create the next generation of marketers. So that's, that's really why I'm here. And I'm looking at your LinkedIn here. You were at, you were at Coca-Cola for a good amount of time. I was. Yeah. And so, you yeah. went 15, 16 years. It's saying yeah. here. And you went all the way up from account manager to senior manager, food service, channel marketing, Coca-Cola North America. That's incredible. And why would you leave that to go agency side? And then why would you leave that to go into teaching? Yeah, it's really funny. I kind of did my career in reverse, right? You uh, typically, you go into um, yeah. agency life and then you go over to the client. Um, no, I always wanted to be a brand marketer. I loved um, working at Coca-Cola. It was everything to me. Um, I still am Atlanta, a member right? of the Alumni Association of Coca-Cola employees. We still have our own little group. Oh, nice. Um, so uh, that was great. Um, just to be honest with you, um, I just was going through some life changes at the time and the company was reorganizing. So I took a package. I raised my hand and took a package um, and I had a young child at the time, and that was really going to be the best path for me. Um, and then I opened a consulting business at the same time, and I consulted nice. with some of Coca-Cola's um, customers uh, for about a year. Yeah. Um, but consulting is not for me. Um, so that's another thing where I feel a little lonely. I like a team atmosphere. I, I like contributing to something, uh, not selling something directly all the time. Um, mm. So um, I actually had a friend that I knew from Coca-Cola days. They were really building the office out for Ogilvy in Atlanta. And he put on Facebook all those years ago, um, know anybody good, um, Ogilvy's looking. And so I answered, well, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And his answer back was, are you available? And I was like, I can be. And he was like, let's have lunch. And so we did all of that over Facebook. We met for lunch the next day. And he asked me to work for Ogilvy the following week. Amazing. So it just kind of um, transitioned into it, I guess. Okay. And that was a better balance? Uh, no, I don't think it was a better balance being in, <laughs> in an agency. But Yeah, I, didn't, I couldn't imagine. Um, but I loved it. I mean, it's so great to see the agency side. You know, yeah. sometimes when you're on the client side, you do not know the agency side. And, and you were there I, for a perfect amount of time. You, mm -hmm. you were there. You, you got a good taste of it. And about three and a half years, and I worked in the Atlanta office, and I worked in the New York office some, oh, and nice. um, actually uh, back on the Coca Cola account. Uh, so I got to walk the halls with my friends and hey, bring them over, and that's awesome. It was a lot of fun, honestly. Uh, but my husband took a job back in Mississippi, um, mm -hmm. so I waited three years before I said, "Okay, maybe I ought to look for a job in Mississippi and come join you <laughs> for purposes mm -hmm. of our family." So. That's how I got to Mississippi and then just kind of fell, fell into this second career that I love now. Gotcha. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And definitely adds a lot of credibility. Definitely makes sense how uh, the university was like, yeah, we got to have you. This <laughs> We'll figure it out. It seemed like they had their, they were trying to get tenure. You were, they probably would like you to be tenured. But then they were like, well, we got to have you. So we'll figure it out and we'll make sure that we're keeping you because you're, you're invaluable to the students. Because you have that experience. Every university kind of has a couple of those. Sometimes, like, they should be lucky to have somebody like you. Um, but it's super important for, for the instructor to have some experience. And it's also important to have that research background for some different data and analytics uh, portions of advertising that I'm not an expert in. So <laughs> we'll leave it to those people. But to have that balance is super important. So I want to get into now, how do you run your classroom? What's your te teaching philosophy for your classes? Give us the breakdown of what your your North Star is. Um, well, I heard somebody tell me a long time ago, you want to tell people how to do something, show them how to do something, make them do it, and, um, and have that experience of applying it. So I kind of use that in the classroom. It's not super... Um, uh, smart um, kind of, a, of an approach, but that's really no. my philosophy. So I start off by um, really kind of explaining the industry um, and I take the class and I make it um, analogous to a couple of roles that they could potentially have. Oh, I and like this. I want to teach it within that kind of framework. Um, so then I start teaching a little bit of the theory, a little bit of the application, 
Um, and so we go through like a whole process. Um, so the two classes that I would say are my hallmark classes that I teach now. Uh, one is account planning, which is um, more strategy and planning inside an agency environment. Yep. And I make it clear that it's a large agency. I'm not talking about like a mom and pop um, or a medium sized agency, one that has a strategy and planning group. Yeah. Um, so I teach um, that course. Um, and in that course, it's a little bit of branding. It's a little bit of consumer behavior. Um, it's a little bit of a research and trying to understand what the real problem is from a consumer standpoint. Um, and then um, coming up with a creative solution by looking at the data and saying, okay, now where could we go in the future with this? What could be the single minded proposition? And then how would you brief it and give it to the creative team so that they can come up with something award-winning and spectacular that changes yeah. the minds of people and gets them to follow the brand. Love that. I need help with that. I forgot about that <laughs> in my career. It's super, no, our strategists at Hava Chicago, they do that every day. Everything you said. Yeah. Um, they're, they're actually looking at now um, microcultures is the big buzzword in our agency right now. Right. So um. I can send you some materials like, or we'll, I'll get you connected with one of our strategists here. Um, and maybe you guys can talk about microcultures that influence everything we do, but he can yeah. speak on that. Um, I love it. What's the other class again? So you have your account planning. What was the other so one? Account planning. I usually teach two sections of that. And then the other one is a campaigns course. Ah, that's um, the bread so, and butter. Yeah, that one's fantastic. So in that one, um, I actually rescoped how that class would um, be conducted. So I put students into agency teams. So I know you're going to like this. Um, is it eight or 16 weeks? Um, it is 16 weeks. Okay. So um, I usually cap the class at 25. So five teams of five. Perfect. And um, I find the client and the clients that I like to find are in CPG industry, usually because that's where I came from. I like to have some of some national scope uh, so that they have that ability to work on a larger level. Um, our client for this last semester was McAllister's Deli um, mm -hmm. out of Atlanta, and they wanted to drive dinner occasions. Um, so what I do is I present that problem um, to them, and I write a creative brief for them to be able to um, kickstart the job. And I put them in the five different agencies. They have to come up with their agency name. They have to learn about teamwork. They have to come up with a contract of how they're going to communicate together, how they're going to work together. And then they start to be briefed by the client um, on a Zoom call or how if we can get them here, that would be wonderful too. Um, and then from that point on, they're responsible for doing the research, coming up with their insights, understanding what their uh, big idea will be. And then they'll have to design everything out. So as part of our curriculum, we teach um, Adobe InDesign and Photoshop and um, a lot of the different kind of creative skills. So nice. they have to act as all the different um, functions of the agency and put together a complete advertising campaign um, from start to finish. Uh, we, it's an IMC campaign because they're also doing a public relations piece in it. They're doing digital marketing. They have to mock up anything that they suggest from a social media standpoint. They have to budget, they have to do the media plan, uh, they do all of that. So it's the capstone course for us. And then um, just based on my past experience, um, after they present back in a pitch to the uh, client, um, the client helps me declare who would win the business if this was the real world. So it's really fashioned more after an RFP there you um, go. process. Yeah. And so the winning group, and um, what I do is I give them a bonus point added to their final grade. So that um, it's like the real world, right? Um, so there could be yeah. only one at the end. Only one agency wins the pitch at the end. Um, so um, they get an automatic A or they get that extra 10 points that gives them yeah, that. As they so, should. Yeah. So they have two Excellent. strategies. They can either kill it on all the assignments going forward. Or if they have some difficulties along the way, that's okay if they're sitting in a B or a C or something because because they can bring it for the pitch and they can kill it and they could possibly win. How do you how do you fail that then? Like if a group's like, are they missing deadlines that you're assigning internally? Are they mm -hmm. like midpoint presentations or just like preparation? Or do you just like roast their creative if it's not great? <laughs> Um, all of that, but uh, really how they fail it is that they don't participate with their team. 
Um, so they don't have the mindset of trying to come up with something for the client, you know, right. and they're, they're missing the meetings. So I do call reports um, so that if they meet outside of class, they have to turn that in to me and tell me, you know, who was at mm. the meeting, what did they contribute? And then I have them rate the meeting. I do peer evaluation so that they can judge each other. And that's about um, 15% of their grade is how their peers graded them. Um, I have the client grade them as well. Um, everybody has to pitch at the end. So yep. that's part of it. Um, there are some individual assignments. I make them look at campaigns that they've, um, or an assignment is to look at past campaigns and to do a critique of it. There you go. So there's some individual grades too. Um, and then there's an attendance grade. You know, part of uh, creating a campaign is showing up and yep. being there every day. So if you sadly cannot attend class and then can't contribute at a high level, it does impact your grade. Absolutely. I, I think you're handling it super well. I think that's the way it should be run. And it makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I'm, And that's so beneficial for students because they're getting it. You're simulating a pretty similar client experience or, or brand or agency experience. You got to show up and work together. If you, and you got to be professional. There's no contracts. You got to show up and do your job or you're out. Um, and I do put a lot of um, emphasis on if you have to be mature at this time. It's really a transition class from the professor lecturing to you versus you having the um, proactive kind of mindset to be able to take on a project and wanting to do your best. So that's really what this class is about too, is transitioning yep. into that kind of professional mindset. And if someone's not pulling their weight, you have to give them a zero. You have to have the maturity okay. to say, I'm not going to carry somebody if they're not yep. contributing. Yep. I was in my capstone. I'll never forget this. I was in my capstone, very similar uh, set up. And I have, I was the only group of all guys. Don't ever make a group of all guys, please. Cause ever. it's terrible. Guys are terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's just so bad. I, and I had to lead the group, but did everything. And the one kid made a song. He didn't tell me we're doing our final presentation to the client. And he started rapping like or singing oh. and everybody it was terrible it was it was i mean i was never been more embarrassed i worked so hard and it was hilarious at the same time looking back we still did fine but because it is you know practice is school it's like nobody's losing money yeah just that just brought up a nightmare <laughs> that was so funny <laughs> you remember it to this day right yeah and the client probably remembers too so if i ever had to reach out and say hello i was i was in the group where the kids started singing so I guess that's the other thing I've learned along the way is that the last week has to be about rehearsals. And so I yeah. spend a lot of time outside of class meeting with them. I give them like a page, two pages yeah. of single spaced kind of feedback on their campaign go. Um, and go through it. And, you know, I, I don't know that they liked me a lot that last week. Um, after it's done, they seem to come back and, and care. Thank you so much. Uh, but, you know, yeah, because they're doing life. well. Like you can't do that. Like you don't add to it at this point, and you go mm. with what you have, and you have to have rationale and research and data points to back up every single decision that you made. Heck yeah! So now I want to get into like this conversation of where your students are ending up. Yeah. Are they go? You, you want them at large agencies, and I do want to ask about like portfolio development and like what are your views on that? This campaign that you're doing is going to end up in their portfolio if they're working hard do you guys like does the school like how are you guys approaching that are you trying to give them like in, in agencies or like real experience like how can you help them develop their portfolios what are you guys doing well they're going to a lot of great jobs by the way uh we've got one at facebook we've got one at tiktok i mean not yep. traditional agencies sure. um uh new york of us it, we've got uh one of our um graduates there Peyton green Peyton, yes. Um, I know Peyton. So, I've worked. She, she and I were. I saw this. She was your connection. We work very closely. Uh, oh, great. I represent Chicago, and the time she was in, she was in the Atlanta office. Right. We were. I, she was running communications for Atlanta. I'm running communications for Chicago. So we worked together. She just recently got up a, a new role, but yeah, I worked with her for a while. That is awesome. I love it when connections happen like that. That's great. Small world. Yep. It is. So um, our students are getting really jobs everywhere, uh, mm -hmm. large companies, large agencies, small agencies, really up to them, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But what we're trying to do is I, I really do emphasize a lot that this is um, the, 
the capstone campaign should be kind of the cornerstone of your portfolio. Now, you should have portfolio work from your InDesign um, class. You should have it oh, in your social media class. Um, so you should have samples of your writing skills. You should have samples of your design skills. But it really depends on what avenue you want to go into. Um, so I think that that's an important part of it. Um, I do if, if they're going to be strong and creative and they have a desire to go to um, be a creative director one day, then, mm. you know, I, I try to tell them that, like, I think you probably ought to go to a finishing school of some sort, uh, the portfolio school or or somewhere to be able creative circus somewhere to be able to get that next level um, and not just a, a bachelor's degree. Yeah. Um, but uh, we have students that are in all those different areas that are doing really great work. Um, yeah. And not everybody wants to be an art director or copywriter. I mean, I'm, no, I'm, I, I skew yeah. that to my podcast because that's I mean, I don't I think everybody should work at an agency while it's still around. The I model is still a thing. Yeah, it's the best place to work. I don't want to, like, <laughs> convince anybody. But why? Where else would you want to? I mean, like you were. You were client side a great client, but for me, I always recommend people go large client, go large agency side, go large agency, and then switch small agency or go client side later on. I completely um, agree because there's nowhere else where you'll get the exposure to so yeah. many different businesses and right. be able to learn. So it makes you a great general manager or it just broadens your mindset so that it's you- fun. And you problem solve a lot differently, right? You start to you move really quick. Have that business acumen and understand like marketing communications and the pace of it is so much more beneficial to developing into a valuable marketing um, person at some point. And I think like the the finishing schools are a great option. There are barriers, obviously the cost, and there are some out there that are cheaper. I'm not here to promote those, um, but I think... It's our job, my job in this podcast, your job as a professor is to th to probably identify those creatives early on and tell them like, hey, you got to work on this. Like you're good. You have potential. You you need to you, obviously you're going to be taking the 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 final class, the, the, the campaign class. But what can you do on the side? Really take your InDesign classes more seriously. I think it's just our job to, and my, I try to teach that to, to let them know they got to work hard on their portfolio early or they will have to end yeah. up going and paying for something else. Yeah, And then there's the American Advertising Federation. They do a great job yeah. at offering different um, kind of scholarships and um, incentives for them. So the American Advertising Awards is going on right now and it's open. I just sent that to some of my students to say, if you're not doing something over the break and design is really your thing, design and go ahead and send in some entries yep. into the AAF. Uh, that'd be great. We also do the national student advertising competition. Um, and I um, over recruit, I would say based off of um, the ones that want to go into design. So I, I didn't want to have uh, heavy design or videography skills going into that competition. I love that. And we're also launching uh, our own award show. That's going to be really great. It's called the crowbar awards. And it's once a quarter, okay. one great brief you, you work on for three months. You get a partner, take your time on it. And it's getting, we're judged. It's being judged by Greg Hahn, the best creative in the industry right wow. now. That's awesome. We're going to send the, the first place winner, a blue crowbar to take pictures with the break in and enter their favorite agency. It's a reward <laughs> and a tool. So that's, cool. that's what we're doing. And it just really helps like you guys, like, when you identify those great creatives early on, they don't, they might not, they might know it. Great copywriters. They just need the shots on goal is what I say. Like as yeah. many po possibilities to work on their pieces early on. And you're doing that, which is great. And we're trying to spread that message. Like you should be working on your portfolio early. Not every undergrad school does that or has a professor that understands that. So your camp, your, your campaign class, uh, I'm sure in your strategy class, like if they want to be a strategist, they have to build out briefs. They're they building do. out briefs and that you can put that in a portfolio too for strategy yeah, briefs. And they have to be curious and teaching. You wouldn't think you'd have to teach a college student how to be curious, yeah. but you do. Curious about the world around them. You know, you yeah. have to go out and you have to think about things in a new and different way. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not, the, 
I, I sometimes I'm curious. Sometimes I get in a mood. Sometimes I just want to watch TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's curiosity too. Yeah, actually, I trained it to like be what I'm interested in, and it teaches me stuff. So that is something interesting that you should know. Get on it. I um, TikTok. I'm on it. Don't worry. Oh, what's your what's your algorithm? What's well, I don't make TikToks. I just okay. watch. Gotcha. So, and I try um, to skip over my students because I think that's a little bit creepy if I were to follow them i don't do that (laughs) yeah but they'll they'll pop up if they're in your phone they do pop up yeah yeah all right final pieces of advice that you tell your students to tell the listeners that some of our listeners can't afford college maybe they're a a community school which is fine but you're offering such valuable information to your students let's just a couple last pieces for our listeners wherever they're at in the world Okay, so of what I would tell my students. Um, Well, first is look at things from a consumer perspective. Don't look at it from what you think um, a client would want to hear. So I really push the consumer perspective. I love uh, Marty Neumeyer, um, who uh, wrote uh, The Brand Gap and Zag and The Brand Flip. Um, So I always give to my students about the second week of the semester, um, a connect, uh, the YouTube video uh, by Marty Neumeyer, The Brand Flip, and ask them to watch that Hmm. um, to be able to understand branding is changing. And so the idea or the goal of branding is really to understand the consumer's perspective, right? It's to get a customer. It's not really to make a sale. It's to get a customer. Because in today's environment, there could be a lot of actions that can take place um, that you'd want that consumer to do, right? Um, So word of mouth is so tremendous these days, right? Influencer marketing. So the idea of being able to cultivate um, advocates or uh, brand love among our consumers, that's going to lead to purchases. um, But that's not what our end goal is, right? So that's one of the things that I say, go, go watch that video. See Marty Neumeyer's um, kind of take on what the brand flip and how branding is going today. And then um, I would um, look for data more and understanding, um, try to develop empathy, uh, try to put yourself in the place of, um, like you said, the micro groups uh, that you guys are looking at. Um, Neumeyer calls it tribes. So don't look at demographics. That's my second thing. I guess that's my big thing. I yeah. always tell my yeah. students, demographics are dead in the modern age. So don't tell me about demographics. I want a psychographic description of who the target is. I want to know what they feel. You don't want to know about 18 to 30 year old. I don't. Females or males. I don't. And I want center yeah. of the bullseye too. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I love that idea yeah. of the target being like a target that you would, an Can't archery you. kind of aim at. I want to. I want you to define for me in a psychographic terms who that middle of the bullseye is, mm. and then um, give that to your creative team, right? And if you're the creative, that's going to help you um, be more creative and find things that connect with people. If you make the target too broad, I mean, 18 to 64, for heaven's sakes, that is a wide range, right? Mm-hmm. Niche the better. 18 to 24 is too wide. 18 year old is nothing like a 24 year old. Right. It's just such a broad thing. So you're going to go to more stereotypes or you're going to water down your creative and you mm-hmm. won't be meaningful to anyone if you do that. So I want to yeah. push past demographics. I love that. Parameters help a lot for creativity. And it seems yeah. like that wouldn't be the case, but the more parameters you have, the more creative you can be. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they don't know that. I was like, discipline gives you creativity. Yeah. And that's a hard lesson to learn. And actually, and also there's actually to create in general, you should be disciplined in your, in creating consistently, which is something that seems very, this is something that I've done with my podcast. Let's say I do a post since I started, I posted every single week and I have not missed one. Some of them are bad. Some of them, I sound terrible. Some of them I wasn't prepared for. That's fine. I still post every week. And I've gotten better over time. Uh, it's compounded better. So if you force yourself to create something every day, whether it's poetry or a new headline or a layout or whatever, a mock ad, I mean, whatever you're interested in and you document your pro- progress along the way, you will become so much better. It will compound 
over time. It's just, it doesn't seem like that makes sense to force yourself to be creative, but it does work. No, I think you're right on about that. I mean, that's why you want to give those um, mini assignments. And that's why you want to keep practicing your craft, because if you went back and looked at what they would do at the first of the semester versus the end of the semester, so different, Good. right? Yeah. And one of the things that I really have a hard time with sometimes is challenging them to push past what they think is acceptable for the client. And oh, I, was yeah. like, I promise you, if you come up with a great idea, that's what the client would pay you for. They don't want to pay you for what their idea is. They want to pay you for something that they could say, oh, yes, now I'll buy into that idea. Yeah, that's so, why you're there. Um, but that's how you get it. What you're doing is absolutely right. I mean, that's just, you know, over and over and over again. In fact, you should edit your ideas. You're never going to have a great idea on the first try. Oh, yeah, for sure. Maybe you would once. Uh, but no, no. Now, now we're in the, the business. Over and over again. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I love it. You know your stuff. So that's great. Your students are in good hands. I'm, and I'm sure they all really love you and appreciate what you've done for them. And I'm sure they always speak back. So well, it's been great. Uh, it's been great to have them on LinkedIn. I follow their careers. I lo- That's the thing that makes me the happiest is to hear about their jobs. And yep. then second, third, fourth job, when they come back to me and tell mm-hmm. me that they got that job, that's that's what it's all about for me. I love that. Perfect. Great. So for the people that aren't your students, and hopefully you give a little extra credit to your current students. That'd be probably good if they listen to this, but I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, for the students that aren't your students out there, whoever people want to break in, how can they reach out to you? If Is that allowed? Can they ask you questions if they want to learn more, maybe learn more about your program, transfer in, who knows? They could totally do that. Um, they could email me, ccsparks at olemiss.edu. Um, very easy kind of email to get in touch with me. Um, they can look for me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to um, connect with anybody and talk with them. Um, so uh, I would look forward to talking to anybody that has an interest. Perfect. All right, Chris, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on again. Thanks, Gina, for giving me the opportunity. It's been of fun. Course. I'm glad. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this entire episode of the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. If you like what you heard, it would mean a lot to us and help us grow and get better guests and better break-ins if you can go to Apple Podcasts and leave us five stars and a small review if you have the time. Be sure to connect with our guests if you like what they said by going to our Instagram at breaking and entering pod that's all one word breaking and entering pod on instagram we have links to their portfolios and their linkedin and they want to connect so do that and thank yous thank you to mikey malarkey our audio engineer and buchan jung our creative director can't do without you two and a team from the university of illinois it's a student team from the agency called AdBuzz, their PR agency, and it's been a pleasure working with them. Thank you all so much, and we will see you next week with another amazing guest.